Hey guys, I'm Hannah Cox with Base Politics, back with my show, Histrionics, where every week I'm reacting to the extremes on both the left and the right when it comes to women's issues. Last week, we covered some truly ridiculous dating advice I found for men in the red pill community. And while you guys really liked it, I noticed some of the men's got their feelings hurt. I've seen a lot of not all men's, which listen, I know that. I don't have to clarify every time I talk about a man that I don't mean all men. Just saying, most men don't feel called out when we talk about bad behavior out of other men because they know they're not doing it. Like, I've actually yet to see women, when I've talked about women behaving badly, come out and say, not all women, not all women, because, like, we know, that girl acting out of pocket has nothing to do with me. But because I am truly a neutral referee when it comes to this gender war, I'm going to talk about some ridiculous commentary I saw from women on the internet this week discussing their own dating lives. I think because I'm a woman, my algorithm does mostly show me content from other women pertaining to truly bad behavior from men. So just to find you many of the videos I'm going to show today, I actually had to comb through tons of genuine horror dating stories on TikTok from women. But the first one that I want to start with today actually did pop into my algorithm organically, and it was so ridiculous it made me want to do this video. This girl's name is Danielle Fewings, and her video has now gone viral, but I actually came across it because another account by the name Scott D. Henry was reacting to it. I'm gonna play you the original clip first. This is how you do not plan a freaking date. You are gonna get rejected. I am here, gonna show you with receipts. I pulled this one from the archive. Let's get into it. I had been on one date with this man and I got right in that group chat after the first date telling the girlies, I think this guy is great. I had such a nice time with him. We had so much fun. We had a lot in common. I could not wait to go on a second date with him. A week or so later, he finally texts me and is like, hey, are you free Sunday for brunch? I'm like, yeah, great. That Saturday night, he sends me this text. Are you still up for brunch? Yes, I'm still up for brunch. You're saying that 5 p.m. on Saturday, brunch assumingly would be Sunday noon one. Yeah, what are you thinking? I could come your way if you know a good spot. Okay, let me do the heavy lifting for you, buddy. So I give him a list of these places and I add, not sure if any take a res, meaning, hey buddy, I'm giving you three options of places I'd like to go, but you are gonna have to do the footwork to determine whether or not they even require reservations, a lot of brunch places don't, or what the deal is. He says, oh, the Dutch eye, not even sure what that means, like, oh, is that a plan? No. So then that morning, I get a text from him, howdy, how does two sound? I never heard back from him the night before, so what do I say? Oh, and I didn't hear back last night about a reservation or anything concrete. I made plans for this afternoon. You cannot, for a second date, try and make plans the morning of. Even less than 24 hours. Like, your girl is busy. We are not sitting around waiting for you to reach out. Just goodbye. And so what is his response? Okay, cool. He, I think, got the point. But either way, I was like, this has to be like one of the like laziest attempts at putting a second date together. Like, bro, second date, what are you doing? You missed out is what happened. Sorry. Okay, I legit took notes on that video because there are so many things I want to respond to here. But my jaw dropped the first time around when we get to the point where he is circling and back yet again to try to confirm plans with her. And she's like, nope, I made other plans. Sorry. Like what? <laughs> so I have to clue you guys in on something. Guys, this is some deep inner girl playbook. I don't even know if I should be sharing this, but I'm going to. Back when I was first beginning to really date late high school, early college, I was making many of the mistakes that women often make, which is that they are too available, they're too into the guy too quickly, they try to like do a lot of things for the guy to show them their interests and like how nurturing they are. And it's really just, it's not something that women think about, it is just very innate to our character, I think, but it often drives men away. So I was seen who became my college boyfriend at the time, and I was really into him, I was wanting it to move forward, and he was, you know, really popular and hot on the college campus 
campus. And so he was sort of like trying to keep his options open. And, you know, I'm like 19, 20. This is my first time dealing with this. I don't know what to do. And one of my friends gives me a book called Why Men Love Bitches. And this book I can't tell you the significance it had for women in the like early aughts. It became the Bible for women in dating. And it's not actually about being a bitch as far as being a mean person, being somebody who's like aggressive. It's actually just about putting yourself first, having your own life going on, having your own thing, not being willing to like give up your plans just because a man wants to see you. It's really not actually bad or malicious advice whatsoever. But I think the problem is that women like this got a hold of this book or other similar types of messages that said that you need to have your guard up so high that the minute he's not like groveling at your doorstep to see you, you need to make other plans and keep your self-respect. And they just take it way too far in the wrong direction, which is what this woman did. So to start off, he is taking initiative with her. He's asking her for a second date. He's staying in pretty constant communication after their first date. Obviously, you shouldn't be calling a woman over and over during this time period or texting her non stop. You're still just getting to know each other. But I think this is a very healthy amount of contact he's showing. He's expressing that he wants to see her again. He's checking in to make sure the time is still good for her. So even if he hasn't locked in the exact plans of what they're going to do that day, he has locked in an actual time for a date. And then on top of that, he is seeming like he's willing to do the bulk of the effort because he says, I'll drive to you. I don't know where these people live at. I live in Atlanta. Driving absolutely anywhere takes at least 20 minutes. So when people offer to come to me, that's a really nice gesture. Secondarily, because Atlanta is such a big city, you probably don't really know the restaurants or options that are near somebody unless you live in their same neighborhood. There's just so much to choose from. So when he asks her what's near you, he's actually trying to take an interest in what she might like, what the good options are. He's willing to go out of his comfort zone and come to hers and put himself in an uncomfortable spot. And she's getting mad about this. I just think this is crazy. My boyfriend and I met on Hinge in Atlanta and he did something very similar. He said, I'd love to see you these times. He gave me some options. Happy to come to you. Not really familiar with your neighborhood. What are some good options? And I was like, great. I love picking restaurants because I'm a great restaurant picker and a great orderer. So I don't understand this whole being mad that he didn't pick the restaurant. Secondarily, them letting you pick the restaurant is actually you getting to pick like the style of place that you like and maybe even the price point of things that you like. I'm a foodie. I like a really nice environment. I love a glass of wine. I'm not a hole in the wall kind of girl. I'm not somebody who likes like sticky floors or a bar stool. And that's fine if you do. But in asking me where I would like to go, I then get to pick the style of place where I'm going to have the best time. Everything about what he's doing is very chivalrous. And I actually think it's really rude of her that she can't even take the extra step to let him know. She's clearly listing out these restaurants that are her favorite. So I would assume she's pretty familiar with their protocol. Can't even let him know, oh, if you pick this one, there needs to be a reservation. Or, hey, I went ahead and looked and these ones have reservations open for that time slot. One of the biggest problems we have in modern dating is that now that both sexes are equal and we don't really need each other per se, and we have to both be bringing to the table things that make the other person want to be with us, there is such a wide array for how people can show up in relationships. Some people still really enjoy traditional gender roles and want to keep that going, and that's totally fine as long as the person that you're seeing agrees to that. Other people do not want traditional gender roles, and sometimes people want something kind of in the middle. I'd put myself more in that middle ground camp. I'm a worker. I always intend to work. I like making my own money, and I have no problem contributing certain things to a household. That being said, I am also still traditional where I do expect men to pursue me, to make the first advance, to pay for dates early on. And even throughout the course of my relationship, I would not date a man who wasn't doing things like taking out the trash, opening doors for me, going to get the car when it's raining. These are just chivalrous kind things to do. And I would do some of those things back as a woman. Like I don't mind doing the dishes. I don't mind cooking dinner for you when I'm free. All of that to say, there needs to be a lot of communication between people when they're starting to date to see if they're on the same page when it comes to those things. Now, she's clearly expecting a very traditional gender role out of him where he comes to her, he pays for everything, he picks the restaurant. She's wanting to be wined and dined. And I absolutely understand that desire that women have. But the reality is when someone is first getting to know you, you have to keep your expectations in a realistic zone. 
planning really fancy dates, bringing you flowers, sending you cards. I see women expecting all of these things on the first or second date, and I just think that's silly. He's also trying to date and get to know you during this time period, so I don't think it speaks very highly of you if you can't even help make a reservation for a place you want to go when he's letting you pick. Like, those expectations are fine, maybe for an anniversary dinner or birthday dinner after you've been dating for a long time, but I just think it's a little ridiculous to expect all that effort right out the gate. On top of all of this, though, it was actually her that failed to follow up with him the night before their date. She didn't really understand what he meant by his response, and instead of clarifying and confirming plans, she let it go and then was all in a huff when he touched base with her the next morning to continue trying to finalize their plans. When she said she'd made other plans, like, I know he didn't believe that. Nobody would believe that, and that's a very weird thing to do if you did. Again, going back to the bitch book, the advice is not to cancel plans for a man when you already have them and he's hitting you up last minute. And I also think that if I were in her shoes and I had plans with somebody but they hadn't touched base the day before to confirm, then maybe I would assume they were going to ghost me or not show up and then maybe I would go ahead and make other plans and that would be a normal thing to do. But in this situation, he's doing everything right. You're in the wrong, girl. I also love the okay cool by him at the end. And she's like, I think he knows what he missed. I don't think so. And neither did the other guy that I initially saw responding to this video. I want to roll his response briefly. Oh, when I didn't hear back last night about a reservation or anything concrete, I made plans for this afternoon. Wait, wait, what? Huh? <laughs> I'm so confused. You cannot for a second date, try and make plans the morning of. He didn't. Your whole entire story and your receipts show that he didn't try just the morning of. <laughs> like you said, he texted an earlier in the week. And then on Saturday, he tried to solidify. You left him on read. And so he's texting you Sunday morning. <laughs> what? And so what is his response? Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay, cool. <laughs> he, I think, got the point. He for sure got the point. I don't think you do, though. <laughs> so after I saw this video, I decided to go on a hunt because I was curious, are there more ridiculous stories like this where women, like, she clearly thinks something bad happened to her. And it's just wild because, again, there are so many videos on TikTok of women legit, like, crying after things that have been said to them or about them or done to them on dating apps or in the wild, that to have this experience and think that you have somehow been wounded and need to, like, show your battle scars on TikTok is just very odd. But turns out there are plenty of other women that seem to have an equally distorted idea of what early dating can and should be like. I just went on the worst second date I've ever been on. So, okay, second date. I went on a first date with him last week. It went really well. He like, we went for drinks and then we went to the park and then we walked his dog and we ate pizza and it was great. And then, so he asks me to go out again tonight. We're supposed to go for, um, well, he wanted to go on a, like something like more elaborate, but I was really tired this week. So I was like, can we do something chill? So, um, we were supposed to go on a walk and a picnic and, um, I like 6.30 at night and watch like the sunset. Like that was his idea. And I get to his place um, where we're going to walk from. And he's like, so like my friend is having, um, is in this tournament for Bra Brazilian <laughs> jiu-jitsu. And he's like fighting in it. Um, do you want to go watch him? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, no. But I didn't know how to say no. <laughs> so I said yes. But I'm thinking, like, it's okay, it's probably not that long, and, like, we'll probably go do something after. Um, so we get there, and he pays $45 for the both of us. And I'm sitting there, and, like, his friends keep showing up. Um, so it's, like, me, and, like, him, and then, like, three of his friends. And, um, like, I introduce myself, but, like, it's weird. Um, and then, like, I don't know why... I'm just like feeling like panicky at this point. Like I'm uncomfortable and I'm like, so like how long is this? And he's like, oh, I think it's supposed to go till 10. And I'm like, till 10? <laughs> I, I straight up said, I was like, I'm, I'm not staying till 10. Like I, I can't, I can't stay here till 10. And then um, at this point, I'm like not feeling good and like I'm about to cry and like I don't know why I'm about to cry, but like that's what I was feeling. I just like, I was feeling anxious. I was feeling uncomfortable. So I tell him I'm going to go to the bathroom. So I go to the bathroom. I call my best friend. I start crying on the phone. And then she, like, 
helps me with my anxiety and then I go back in and I'm like it's okay we're probably gonna do something after it's fine so I sit down I'm talking to him and I'm like so like can we go to like my favorite restaurant after this like it's just it's not very far and he's like oh um I kind of like told the guys that I would go to the gym with them at 10 p.m so I'm like you're gonna go to the gym tonight at 10 p.m like after this and he's like yeah like they just added me to the group chat and like I have to go like I just committed to it you committed to it <laughs> like you committed to our first our second date at this point it is 8 p.m i'm not staying there for two hours for me to leave by myself and him go to the fucking gym this man is 31 by the way i finally get up the courage to tell him like at 805 to tell him that like i'm leaving um so i'm like hey you know what like i'm gonna go home now and um he's like oh are you sure like can you stay and watch my friend fight and i'm like oh like when, when's he going he's like oh there's like seven people ahead of him and i'm just like no like i'm i'm gonna go now and i'm telling him this holding back tears i don't know if he's stupid he just couldn't tell but like i'm like trying not to cry I'm telling him that like i'm leaving yeah it's 8 27 he hasn't texted me or anything he's still there i go to my friend's house <laughs> that was horrible <laughs> again i took more notes because while that video was only three minutes long there was so much happening there first and foremost she just doesn't communicate right out the gate this drives me nuts and i know that this is a like social conditioning women have where they are not taught to speak up for themselves i very fortunately was homeschooled have a very strong mom and do not have that problem but like women just speak up and say what you want like i do truly think that men are as a whole more laid back have lower expectations and are fine with a wider array of experiences on a date now i will say my first instinct when i was listening through this video was like this guy sounds pretty young and he's probably just kind of inexperienced at dating he's still hanging out with his friends he sounds like he's still kind of in that like you know frat bro hang out with your group of guy friends all the time prioritize them sort of stage of life because i mean most men should probably be aware that on a second date and probably really hardly on any date does a woman want to go watch your friends fight like men and sweating and fighting. It's just not really an activity most women are hunkering after and certainly not for a romantic experience. But she does say in the video that he is 31 years old. So once she said that, all of my excuses for him kind of went out the window. But the reality is there are a lot of 31 year old people who are simply stunted. And that's kind of the point of dating is to sort through them, see who you're actually compatible with, see who's on the same wavelength as you. In this case, they simply don't sound like they're a good match. He probably is still very immature and she seems like an emotional wreck. Like this is your second date. You at most, what, lost a couple hours of your life and you're crying on the internet about this. This is emotionally unstable. Not only are you crying on the internet about it, apparently you started crying on the date. You're sneaking off to the bathroom. You're crying. You're calling your friend. You're coming back and talking to him with tears in your eyes. Like he probably thought you were nuts. Personally, I think you're a little nuts. Like as a whole, this man was not rude to her. He paid for her to get in. He was being kind to her. He was inviting her to keep hanging out. Yes, he made some weird plans to go to the gym at 10 when you were hoping like that's when the wine and dining portion of the date would start. But I'm betting he made those plans once you started crying in the bathroom, having a panic attack next to him and totally wigging out. Like, I truly can't understand what about this circumstance is making you have a panic attack, giving you anxiety, or making you cry. Back in the day when I was in high school and early college and we were on a bad date, we were truly trapped there. Like, there was nothing you could do. You kind of just had to wait it out. But nowadays, you have Uber. If it's really that bad, pick up your phone, call Uber, and go home. The comments on this video did sort of restore my faith in humanity because the vast majority of people were just like, girlfriend, something's up with you. One person said, if that's your worst date, then you have a lot coming yet. <laughs> like, yes, I've had so much worse dates than this. Another person said, LOL baby girl, if that's your worst date, you have lived a charmed life. Just wait for the shitstorm that is dating. Another one said, unless there's more to this story, what you just described is not the worst date. Another commenter said, the crime was frustration, disappointment, disbelief, and anger. I can't blame you for crying at all. I do still blame her for crying. That is completely ridiculous behavior. But I do think this commenter hit the nail on the head, which is that this girl had done something many women do, which is build this night way out of proportion in her head. 
Again, it is your second date. You don't know this person. I don't know why you're expecting it to be a rom-com. If it is a rom-com, you're probably dating a love bomber and your flags need to go up, actually. And I truly think a lot of it does boil down to that. Women have these perceptions that are based on like Disney movies and romantic films and books that they've read. And they are really looking for all of the wrong things in a partner and mostly chasing a fairy tale that doesn't exist. And they get their hopes built way up and then they get crushed so easily by the smallest infraction. Dating apps as a whole are not a very good place to try to meet somebody, even though, as I said, I've had some success there. You have very little to go off of when you're on these platforms other than how somebody looks or maybe what you think their activities or lifestyle is, but it's very easy to lie about those things. Being able to tell if you have genuine connection, if you have the same value system, if your lifestyles are actually compatible, that's really hard. And you basically have to go on a lot of dates that are duds in order to find somebody who truly matches you in those areas, which is why I tell both men and women, there are so many better ways you could be trying to meet somebody if that's something you're interested in. You can start going to church and getting involved with activities there. You could sign up for a sporting league. You could find a creative hobby that involves other people. You could start volunteering somewhere. You could become involved in activism for causes you care about. But if you're going to go on the apps, you have to accept that you're simply going to have to sort through a number of people that aren't good fits, and that's okay. I've actually become very good friends with several men that I've rejected or been rejected by on dating apps. Just because you're not going to ultimately be romantic partners doesn't mean they're not somebody you can be friends with still. Like, you just need to take the stakes down a good bit. Secondarily, I know a lot has been said about women's standards on dating apps, particularly in the red pill community. And I'm kind of in the middle on that too. I think there are some superficial women who only care about things like a man's height or his income or how he looks. And usually those women tend to be extremely insecure themselves and need a man that's really good looking or earns a lot of money in order to feel better about themselves. Or sometimes there are women who are simply superficial and don't want to work. I have no respect for anybody who doesn't want to work. But as a whole, when you're on these dating apps, there's really very little to go off of besides those kinds of factors. Women can be attracted to a lot of men that are not necessarily their ideal, but that attraction usually takes place in person and you can't really ascertain that on the apps. And because there are simply so many people to sort through when you're on there, using these kinds of superficial arbitrary factors, I get to an extent. But personally, I would always try to find out more before I would waste my time on an actual date. For me, factors like, do they want to have kids? Because I don't. What were their religious values? What were their political beliefs? What kinds of hobbies did they have? What was their family background like? All of these kinds of factors were better indicators for me on whether or not I'd actually want to go on a date with someone. But while I was combing through TikTok, I did find one girl who had an absolutely ridiculous standard for dating that I have to show you. Okay, so I see this guy on Hinge and I'm like, oh my God, he's so cute. He works out, he rides a motorcycle, he's in a tux. Then I see his prompt about his date fail and how a girl stood him up because of his star sign. So I ask him what it is and he says a Gemini. And honestly, that was the end of that. This is why I'm still fucking single. That is an outrageous reason to unmatch with somebody. There are only 12 months in a year and you're gonna be mad at somebody because they happen to be born in one of them. This kind of thing does make me feel for you guys. As a whole, I think women need to have much more realistic expectations for dating, especially early on. I think they need to be a whole lot better at communicating what their standards and expectations are. And I think they need to show a bit more grace because dating is scary for everybody. And while I am somebody who still expects men to make the first move and put themselves out there, I try to always be really gracious in those interactions, whether I'm interested or not, because I understand that putting yourself out there and getting rejected is scary. It takes a lot of confidence and guts, and at the very least, it should be rewarded with kindness. So women, take it down a notch, please. All right, guys, that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to check out others in my series, Histrionics Here. And don't miss my podcast with Brad Palumbo, the Base Politics Podcast, every Wednesday here.